Welcome to my YouTube channel and I thank you for subscribing and following me. I'm delighted to be able to have opportunity to talk about my art because that's what I'm really passionate about, obviously, and the things that I do out there in the arty land. Well, when I say arty land, I mean painty land and getting my fingers dirty and not in the studio like I am here. Well, if you call this a studio, but it'll do. Um, one of the things you'll find me is I'm just me. Uh, I'm Russell McCain. Uh, look... <laughs> It's really strange being a very, very, very rare name. There's two Russell McCains in the world. Hello, the other Russell, if you happen to see this. Um, and he lives in America, in Boston, and I live here in Tasmania. And so yeah, when it comes down to where worlds apart we are, uh, except he looks very much like me and I look a bit like him too. He's got hair. I don't. Whoa! That's the genetics of it all, but that's fine. Uh, but it means that Russell McCain is easy to search and easy to find. Um, not necessarily coming up quickly, but um, you'll find me on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, as well as here. Just a little bit about myself. And this is a longer form video, which I'm doing here on, on YouTube. So um, I'll take a little bit of time uh, to, to describe where I am and, and where I've come from. So as you can tell by my beard, my balding, my hair, I'm yeah in my 60s, in my mid 60s. And, um, uh, and that means I've got a lifetime of experience. If you've been following me a little bit on the media for a while, you'll realize that this is about 50 years of painting as an artist. Now, was that full-time? No. Well, it was my, my job and my living as an educator. So if you did a Google search on Russell McCain, everything on Russell McCain that pops up with those two names together is me, but um, I've also been an educator and an environmentalist as well. So um, you, you'll see a diversity of things, but basically, uh, yeah, when I, I've lived my life beautifully to this time, let me talk a little bit about how I started painting. Now, for you young people who go to school and kindergarten, preschool, you sort of get brought up with paint brushes and chalk and things like that. You can do media, you can express yourself in and, and you're probably one or two years old when you're first given a paintbrush and some paint. Well, growing up in Australia in the 60s uh, and uh, in the early 60s, we didn't have that stuff. The most we had in painting wise as a, as a kid was we had colouring in books that had little dots on them and those dots were paint and you could take a little brush, a really daggy brush and you could wash it and paint it and, and you got the colour for the picture so you didn't have to use your pencils and the pencils we had, whoa, the pencils you artists guys have today, the polychromes and those are just fantastic. Well, the ones we had like, you know, it's that scratch the paper and damage the paper type of pencils. And that was the standard pencil. They weren't, they weren't the big pencil brands uh, that we have now. Even Stadler were pretty staid. Uh, so nowadays you've got beautiful materials and resources. But as a kid, we had nothing. So I also didn't go to kinder or preschool. I went straight to school as a six-year-old. So we didn't do any of that stuff, even at school. We didn't have an art room as such. We did do a craft afternoon, I know, in grade two. I don't remember anything like that in grade one. Uh, in grade two, we had a craft afternoon, and we did a little bit of, you know, sticking and pasting and gluing. And, and I remember one day, we had, we, had this, we had to bring something in to do for that afternoon. And, and, and I've seen this, this um, I think we were making a jigsaw puzzle, actually. And we had to paint something on the jigsaw puzzle or do something to decorate it. Now, the first time I'd ever done any paints, but I managed to get my mum, and I don't know how this happened. It was a paint-by-number kit that had little pots of paint about this size or that size, and I was a small kid, so they're quite small. And um, you took the paint and you painted the warship, and I painted that, and I did a pretty good job of it. But I tell you what, I hated oil paint because... 
it was yucky. It didn't work, not very well. It was just tacky and got everywhere. And, and uh, you know, I'm a bit like Calvin and Hobbes uh, in, the, in the cartoon. I've been reading a lot of them lately. I, I was a very explory, exquisitive, inquisitive kid. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't have ADHD, but I don't know what it was, but I was into everything. And uh, so, yeah. I didn't like the paint. Mm, the wall ship came out okay. I would cut it up on a with a jigsaw, jigsaw, not a machine, a jigsaw, hand jigsaw, and made a puzzle out of it. And uh, that was all my art. That was all my art until oh, it must have been year seven. And uh, and it was one of those things that were really you know difficult about. You know, being a kid, I was an outdoor kid. It was in the days when, you know, the sun went down, you had to be home, uh, or the street lights went on, you had to get home. So it was one of those childhoods which I had a fair bit of freedom around the place and um, and played with my mates in the backyard, cricket and stuff like that. I wasn't a sports person, by the way. I was a antipathy of a sports person, but I was pretty creative and we made cubbies and we did all sorts of fun things. But art wasn't a part of it. And one of my really interesting remembrances of being uh, of art and what real art was was in the town I lived in in Narragin in Western Australia. I'm in Australia, and, and Western Australia is right on the west coast. It's a bit like being in California compared to where I am now, which would be um, sort of up, up at the top end of, of uh, New England or something. Um, and the, the mates down the road had an older sister. She was 16 or 17. She was in senior high school and she was doing art. And she used to paint portraits of people, yeah, that sort of size. And she used a kitchen knife and oil paint. Key, key thing, the oil paint. And I thought, wow. And she did a good job. I really enjoyed looking at what she was doing. And, and so I thought, oh, oil paint? Oh, it must be what real artists use oil paints, and uh, this was I was eight, nine years old by this stage, and and uh, that's what I come to understand that 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 uh, artists used oil paint, and and hey, she used a kitchen knife. That, that that sort of memory stuck in me. That's really important to this story as as I go forward. So there I was, uh, kid being kid. Uh, no interest in art whatsoever. Had incredibly good background in creativeness in theatre and, and in performance. My parents were in amateur theatre and, and the creative sides were there and I'd done some, some um, uh, performance stuff there and I'd done some ballet when I was a kid as well, but visual arts, nothing. So in year seven, so here we are, picture, you know, year seven kid, with his mates, we have a relief teacher. Now, now this is Cookie Lucas, Mrs. Lucas. Um, she she came in to do relief for us, and maybe there was new lessons planned for her that day or whatever. But she decided to take us outside to draw. And so we got a piece of paper. We took our pencil cases with us. No special art materials. I think we just had. Well, maybe a bit of uh, it was a bit of cartridge. I'm not sure. And we went out with a clipboard to go and sit under the trees and draw. Well, first of all, pig in mud, like I wasn't in a classroom. That was a win. Uh, and I started drawing these trees on the edge of our playground, and dang, they looked pretty good. They were like looking like those trees, and I'm really proud of myself. I'm going, wow, I didn't know I could draw. I didn't know, you know, <laughs> the only thing I'd ever done before was battleships and stuff. Um, which isn't drawing. And <laughs> so, I, oh, well, that's pretty good. I'm enjoying this. I'm getting a lot of kudos myself about it. Well, that went good for a little while. And, and I'm not sure whether the teacher had commented how the good looked as she walked past. I don't know. But then my mate, good friend of mine, decided to take my pencil case. And I think I probably needed a sharpener pencil or something. Again, it was pretty lousy pencil. It was probably a HP. And um, so, of course, I went and tried to get my pencil case back, and that ended up with the tug of war with pencil case. Well, that was it. Russell, off to the principal's office. 
Now, in those days, you got the cane and things. And if it had been the principle I had before this one and the principle I had after this one, I probably would have got the cane. But fortunately, I had a really good principal and I still know him. He's still alive and I know his family well. And um, But I don't know what happened at the principal's office. I don't remember. It was probably sit there, Russell, and, uh, you know, be quiet and don't say a thing and go back to class when the art time is finished. The teacher just wanted me out of her hair, basically speaking. And uh, so there you are, end of the art career. It's hard to believe, but that's the most drawing and art I've done up until uh, that was year seven, so I was 12, maybe 13. But the incredible thing happened that year. Later in the year, it's coming up to Christmas. And I thought, Christmas, ah, what do I do about that? And we, we were poor as church mice. We, we didn't have a much income at all. Mum wasn't working at that point in time. And, you know, it was, was yeah, pretty tight, very tight when I, mean, I think about it back now. But... I was going down the main shops and, and we had this big general store. It's in a place called Coolerman. Now, Coolerman is just out of Wagga Wagga, so in the Riverina. So, oh, I'd moved by this stage from Western Australia to the middle of the Riverina. And uh, so I'm there, walking past the shop, and there on the front window display, inside the window, was this set of oil paints a little set, this big. You know the ones with eight mils of paint in them? Very tiny ones, and there was 12 colours. And I go, wow, oil paints. Real artists use oil paints. I don't know whether it was because I'd drawn the trees and thought that I'd like to paint some trees. I don't know. But I'm sitting there, and I go, oil paints. Oh, that's fantastic. So what did I do? Uh, they were two dollars, and two dollars in those days was a pretty much fortune. Eh, probably you can get them at a cheap oil place today for fourteen dollars or twenty dollars, but two dollars in those days was probably like having twenty five dollars. Um, it was pretty expensive, and there weren't cheap art shops anywhere that I hadn't seen these things before in my life. And um, you know they had the watercolor sets with the hard pats and things like that. I know they'd been around, but I had no desire to use them. They weren't for real artists. <laughs> you had to use oil paint, surely. <laughs> it's funny the ideas you get as a kid, and maybe culture culturally that was what artists used. That was the big artists used. So I don't know how I knew that, but anyhow, I went home to mum and said, "Oh, mum, 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 for Christmas, can I get that set of water uh, oil colors in the in the shops?" Ah, and oh, what do you want those for? You know, oh, I just want to paint. You know, I really love them for Christmas. And, uh, and I badged her a bit, and I badged her a bit, and and every day after school, I would divert down to the shops and have a look in the window, and there they were, still there. Oh, good, Mum can buy them. Maybe two dollars was like you know pretty close on maxing out the major present. But I was hoping my sisters might buy it for me, and I and, and so come around Christmas Day. Well, before Christmas Day, as I'm going down the shop, the paints had disappeared, and I thought, oh, bother, they're sold. Might have been for me, because uh, I didn't sound like Mum was really going to do anything about it. And uh, so, anyhow, Christmas Day, I opened up my presents from both my sisters. Uh, and we normally had about a 50 cent present limit, maybe 20 cents if you're lucky, it was 50 cents. So $2 was way outside their normal budget. And uh, there was the oil paints. <laughs> How many known to me, Mum had bought them? I was over the moon. It was like, wow, Christmas has come at once. That was really important to me. So I thought, oh, wow, that's great. So Christmas afternoon, we go out the backyard and we're having a bit of a, uh, an afternoon play. The, the, the four of us kids and mum and dad were out there and, and we didn't do that all that often, but Christmas Day was special, I guess. I might have had a few people around because of a few chairs around and, and we, were, we were there and I thought, oh, I've got to paint with these paints. So I grabbed the paints out and I sat down 
on the grass probably with my paints and a, a, a pad. Wow, maybe I got given a pad with it. I don't know. But there was just a paper. It was like a paper pad. It was a pad, though. And so I sat down, and there were two trees in bloom at the time. And I've seen a few of these around at the moment. The silky oak, which is a big tree. It's got these beautiful, rich, deep orange, yellow flowers. Um, and there was another small tree in the garden, which was probably a bottle brush or something like that that had red flowers in it. So I sat down, and, and you know, with the – there was a – brush in the set um, with the brush in the set and I think I used the brush in the set and I I painted this tree the, the small one first with the red flowers and it turned out pretty good I thought well, I can do trees at least and then I did another painting of the of the of, of the silky oak the big tree and it came out pretty good too and uh, everyone at the, the gathering there were pretty impressed that I'd actually tuned these two paintings out in that period of time and they look good um, and I thought wow well, you know, hmm, someone's appreciating what I'm doing maybe that was it I don't know this ego driving thing that goes on and so anyhow I, I, I thought oh that's fantastic this works and uh, they're only little paintings so you know probably that size is just on paper with no backgrounds or anything so oh well, that's pretty good and the day finished and put it away so I hadn't forgotten the paints, but then this is the most important, I'm scratching myself here, it's a bit itchy, uh, this is the most important uh, thing that happened next because, as I mentioned earlier, my folk were involved in theatre and they were getting ready for uh, uh, putting a musical in town and, and mum and dad had left the, the, the younger kids, me included, who was a monkey in the place with my elder sister to keep an eye on us, um, and uh, by this stage, I was 13. My birthday was a few weeks' time. And they went off to Wagga for rehearsals one evening and, and said, um, you know, you look after yourself and don't cause a problem and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm there, and this is a feeling, if you're an artist, you've probably had this before. You get this overwhelming sense of itchiness, Itchiness in the hands, itchiness, oh, I've got to do something. And I hadn't really experienced this before in anything great, but in the creative field it was like, I've got to paint. I've got to paint. I really want to paint. I've got the paints. I've got the – I thought, what am I going to paint? So I thought, oh, I'll paint. So what am I going to paint on first? Well, I found a bit of masonite. It was about this big. And I thought, okay, I'll paint on that. And uh, – and That'll be good. And uh, if you've been seeing my shorts, you will have seen this painting just in the last week or two on, on YouTube. And um, I thought, oh, paint on this piece of masonite. That, that's a great idea. So I grabbed the masonite and thought, oh, can't use a brush. Got to use a, a kitchen knife. So I went to the kitchen and found the daggiest kitchen knife I could so I didn't get in trouble. I didn't want to take the bone handle ones, which were really rather nice. Probably done a better job than the one I picked, but I just picked this one that I thought if I get it mucked up, I'll get into trouble and we can clean the knife. It would have a metal handle. And so I thought, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll use that. So I thought, what do I paint? I didn't have, it was that night, <laughs> I couldn't go out and paint the tree outside. So I went to the books and we had this book which um, had a whole heap of photos around the place in you know, Australia and Australian scenes. And, and there was a photo of this bushfire, I mean, this raging bushfire. And it was probably a photo from 1969, which was, you know, only a, a, a few years before this. Oh, it's about that time, actually, maybe. Uh, it was big fires here in Australia, and I saw this painting of a bushfire, and the fire raging through the trees. I thought, well, I can I can paint trees. I know that. I've tested that out. I drew them. I painted them twice, mind you, once each. I can paint trees, so I can do this bushfire. And so I got out there, and I got my knife, and I palette knife the painting. Well, I used up nearly all the paint. I used up all the red, or vermilion it was, in fact, all the, the yellow, and so I'm mixing that to make the oranges as well. I used up all the black for the trees. I used up all the ochres and browns for the smoke haze. And, and at the end of the time, I had a few br br browns and greens, not browns, blues and greens left over, and a bit of white maybe, 
Well, I think I used all the white. But I had a painting. I thought, well, that's the end of the paint set. Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. And uh, I was pretty proud of what I did. I put it up there. Well, when mum and dad got home, I didn't know how they would react. I thought, you know, we'll be in trouble. I uh, probably won't be. I was pretty good. Anyhow, they looked at the painting and dad particularly, but mum and dad were like, wow, you did that? And that? You did that? Yeah, that's amazing. And so I thought, wow, <laughs> I can actually do this. Uh, yeah, that was great. Went to bed feeling really good. I painted. I got it out of my system. That sort of drive to paint was satisfied. And the next day when I wake up, I go, oh, crap. <laughs> I've got no paint left. <laughs> what do I do now? Because, like, that was Christmas present. <laughs> All out there on the canvas on the, on the masonite. The masonite wasn't even primed. It was straight on the brown side. <laughs> and... Uh, was like, well, that's it, you know, that's it, end of that. Well, at the end of that week, I got the surprise of my life. Dad came home and plonked in my hand on the table a whole heap of paint tubes that he'd bought new, the 40 mil ones, the big ones, so five, six times the size of the one I'd, I'd used up. And I think he got me a couple of bits of canvas board as well to paint on, something to paint on as well. And uh, he said, well, we were so impressed with what you'd done that we decided that we'd encourage you and get these paints. And I was stunned. I was just really blown away. I mean, that was like, I don't know what they cost in those days. They were probably $6 a tube or something like that uh, of, of a good paint. Uh, well, they were as good as you can get anywhere at that point in time. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I started painting. And every bit of mason right in the house got used up. And I started painting every day after school. And, and uh, when I get home, I started painting. And, and I just painted as much as I could. And uh, then we moved to Sydney and I painted there and, and uh, used to paint the lounge. I've got bigger pieces of things. And I sold occasional ones um, to friends and people who came by. And uh, so I, just, I ended up paying for the art, for the product a little bit, covering me pay, paying for paint and that. I don't know, but mum and dad were pretty good because you know, mum started working by this stage so money wasn't quite as bad as it was. And... Um, and so, yeah, they just kept me up with paint and materials. Whenever I wanted to paint, I could paint. And, and uh, it's wonderful when your parents are supportive like that. I know a lot of you artists who might be listening to this, you just wish my parents were like that. Like, you know, they don't want me to be an artist. They don't want me to do that. They don't want me to, to express myself like I love doing. Uh, but there you go. They were very supportive. So I might finish that there. Just for the moment, I've got more stories about my painting life coming up. But I wanted to sort of start you off and fill you up on, in that. And thank you. If you have listened this far, you've obviously enjoyed hearing the stories of my painting and, and how I started. Because uh, when you see, you know, the painting I've got behind me now, this was, uh, this was done in 1999. So literally uh, 70 to, to 99. So it's pretty much... Um, 30 years later I did that one um, but um, yeah so that was the beginning of my journey now if you enjoyed finding please subscribe at the, at the back and you know you, you may not buy my paintings you may not do anything else but it certainly supports artists when you subscribe and like and comment on their work if you do those three things subscribe like and comment uh, the algorithm picks it up and and um, you can you know that was help us, the artists get known a bit better around the world <laughs> And, and who knows, this channel might get to the point where Instagram will pay me <laughs> for the ads that get put up against these videos. So um, thank you for that. And uh, you can always find me, Russell McCain, as I said at the beginning, my name's pretty rare. Uh, Russell McCain on Instagram, at Russell McCain Art is my professional Facebook page. Uh, you, can, you can follow me there and, um, and basically, yeah, follow along uh, and... Uh, and you'll hear a lot more of this story and you'll, I'll be giving you some insights into my painting processes and what I consider about good art. Because I've been painting for 50 years, 
I've got a lot of experience and uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be sharing that with, with you people. And if you're artists, uh, I have a lot of tips and helpful things to say to artists on all my channels. So thanks a lot. Oh, and I did forget, I do have a web page, russellmccain.com. Pretty easy to find as long as you spell McCain right, M-C-K-A-N-E, not like the chips or the other things around the world, but um, or the politician, John McCain. Uh, but... Um, yeah, russellmccain.com. You can go over and see a lot more detail. If you're interested in my paintings, you want to find out, oh, what does he sell that painting for? You can go on there and find prices. Anything I've got on my website is basically available for sale. Uh, I've got one, I think, that isn't now. But um, So if you're interested in that. But other than that, follow along and subscribe, and thank you for watching.